Hey folks, it's me, your really awesome IT guy. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about one of my projects that I've been working on that I wanted to share. And that's this guy you see on your screen now. That is the Acer Spin 1. It's a low-end 2-in-1 tablet from Acer. Now you may have seen this uh, under another name, and that would be the Chromebook 311. So Acer took a couple of these guys and slapped Windows on them instead of Google Chrome. And the results were, well, pretty bad. Let's take a look at the specs. It has a dual core Celeron, 3350, four gigs of RAM, painful, 32 gigs of storage. And this is unupgradable. It's all soldered, there is no upgrading. Now, later on down the line, they did release a Pentium version with 64 gigs of storage, but that's not what I have here. It also comes in the box with an active stylus. I got one of these on clearance from Micro Center a couple years ago for the low, low price of $200. Yes, all of this for less than the price of an iPad keyboard. <laughs> so anyway, how did it run on Windows 10? Well, it barely ran on Windows 10. Let's see, uh, whenever there was any Windows update, TIWorker.exe would take 100% of the CPU for about an hour. The malicious software removal tool did the same. Google's software reporting tool, spyware that comes with Google Chrome did the same, which led me to uninstall Google Chrome from all of my Windows systems. And even though I kept an SD card in this machine for all of my data, it still needed a USB drive inserted in order to do a Windows feature update, which was insane. So of course, it is not eligible for a Windows 11 upgrade. Even though it has a TPM 2.0 chip, it's because of the 32 gigabytes of internal storage. So what do I do with it to keep it out of a landfill? Well, you know what IT guys do. We put Linux on it. <laughs> so I wanted to show you folks uh, what it does and how it works running Linux. So if anybody else is trying to do that with these machines, you can see what the experience is. Now, one of the biggest issues and the hardest part of this whole process was configuring the BIOS. It wasn't just taking out secure boot, disabling secure boot, but Acer somehow hid under many steps getting the machine to boot from a USB drive. And I had to consult a YouTube video to unlock this hidden setting in the BIOS. And I'll put the link in the description for anybody who actually has this thing. So anyway, you get through that, then it was pretty much smooth sailing on the install tip. Of course, I put Ubuntu on there because that's just what my go-to is. I'm sure Linux Mint will probably work just as well. And uh, of course, the biggest worry that you would have with the two-in-one, especially a two-in-one with a pin, is well, will Linux support this without any fuss? Um, it did recognize the pin. It recognized the stylus. The only issue that I had was whenever I turned the stylus on or used the stylus for the first time, it would constantly put in a warning that my stylus battery was less than 1%. I even bought a new battery for it and it still didn't take that off. So what I had to do was disable the warning altogether. But that also disables the battery warning uh, for the entire device. I don't like those anyway and I don't like draining my battery anyway. So that wasn't a huge deal. Printers work without me doing any configuration whatsoever. And as you see from the screenshot, the bottom icon on my left side, on my left panel, is Microsoft Edge. Yes, Microsoft Edge Stable has been released for Linux and it runs it quite well. There's one other strange thing about the touchscreen experience on Ubuntu, and that is that by default, Firefox does not recognize a touchscreen. So I had to go into the config files and make some changes there. Link is in the description for that. But that was kind of odd. But everything else works perfectly fine with the touchscreen. Well, just about. But we'll get to that in a minute. Another controversial thing in Ubuntu lately is the Snap Store. And I don't like it. <laughs> I like the idea, but it's not working. It's not there yet in execution. When you open up the Snap Store, half of the time it works. The other half, it's empty. It's just as unstable as the Windows 10 App Store. 
you'll see in this example here i was trying to install obs and it just sat there and spun i went to the command line and installed it the the regular way another thing to watch out for is when you're watching videos this thing has a 1080p screen but if you try to watch anything in 1080p it gets hot this is a fanless machine and it will get very hot and uncomfortable uh, with temperatures up into the 60s it gets very hot it can go up into the 60s and almost 70 uh, degrees celsius at times it gets pretty toasty without a fan here's another quirk in it when it comes to the virtual keyboard the touchscreen keyboard it's sort of on or off so what you have to do is you have to go into the accessibility or ease of access menu and turn the screen keyboard on or off if you leave it on it will pop up whether it's in tablet mode or laptop mode so I just have that shortcut at the top of my screen so when I know that I'm going to be on a stretch using the touch screen I know to turn the touch screen keyboard on now one more thing because I'm using this instead of Windows 11 I found another desktop environment called Budgie and Budgie desktop looks just like Windows 11 if you massage it a little bit it looks great it performs great but the touchscreen and on-screen keyboard stuff just isn't there yet but it's something to watch out for and it's part of what makes Linux so fun <laughs> Linux can save your computer from a landfill and Microsoft saying that devices need to be thrown in the trash or uneligible ineligible for upgrades and also Windows taking a 32 gigabytes of space is crazy so if you want to take a look at a uh, saving some computers from landfills we know that a big e-waste uh, mountain potentially is coming as people throw away their computers because microsoft told them to anyway just some more content it's me your really awesome it guy